10 months ago, I uploaded the Legend of Wall video where a player at rather low elo would wall in the enemy, and his name was Wall, and that was all this player did. I was getting emails about it uh, nonstop, uh, actually about this one particular player, and I showed it to the world, and then the player disappeared. And I thought that I had ruined him. I thought, like many legends, maybe they said, oh, well, now everyone knows my trick. Now I can't do it anymore. But Wall has been back for about a month now, and Wall has been doing some other strategies, but also walling. And what made me realize that he was back was this Reddit post right here two days ago. I'm going to read it because it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> uh, I... It was on the AW2 subreddit. It just said, Wald, question mark. I was clowning with Mayans in an arena 1v1, and I had an opponent called Wall and had to pick Portuguese. He walled me in after killing my eagle in as soon as he hit futile. I was still in Dark Age. I boomed up to castle and tried to ram him down, but he had Maganels behind walls. Then he went bombard cannons with that weird ballistics thing and didn't let me break the walls. He didn't attack me really either. I feel so violated. <laughs> Hilarious strat and perfect execution in my opinion, though. I wouldn't know much because I'm the noobest noob out there. It's my favorite comment. I feel so violated. And then you go down and this person says, yeah, he does that. And um, he is, he was surprised. So I actually have multiple, whoops. I actually have multiple uploads with Wall to potentially show people. But I figured that we would show this game in particular to see if anything has changed from that game uh, many months ago. And of course, he might be a bit rusty as he's returned, and he's around 1,000 ELO. Now, I don't know if this is the same person. There were other arena games with um, with Wall where he played against people playing as the Mayans. So I don't know if this Reddit thread is, is the same guy. Uh, the name is very different here than it was on Reddit. But anyways, Wall is in the red. And Wall, uh, he's ready. And in the blue, we have... Uh, um, Skank. <laughs> Skank, what a name. What a beautiful name here. I'm sure his mom, his or her mom is proud. Um, I would prefer Mayans, personally. I think that Mayans are better overall civ on Arena. But the, the talking point is not so much going to be about options of the civilizations. It's just how is Wall going to Wall if Wall does indeed Wall. And wait a second. He actually... He's pushing in all of his deer right away. Uh, okay, he's gonna... He killed them and then didn't eat them. He was finishing the sheep. And now he's gonna go over... Pushing in the next one. I mean, normally I would scout my base a little bit more. Push in one at a time. But if there's one thing I know about Wall... Wall is a player of commitment. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. You can do it. The TC's idle right now. Not producing any vills. And okay, alright. Got the Ibex now. TC idle time went up because of the focus here, but... While doing some things that pros can do. Just, uh, you know, lacking some execution and timing on it a little bit. Like, with the amount of bumping and walking with villagers, it's looking a little a little crazy over here. A little bit hectic. Um, So, watching Wall play is fascinating because he actually had two different things that he would like to do. And if people on Twitch and if people on YouTube are interested, I could actually try and investigate the other strategy which I never showed you guys. And what his other strategy was, was on Arabia, so an open map, he would make a barracks really early. He would make a barracks, I think, before a lumber camp. So he would chop straggler trees, make a barracks, and make a few militia. I actually, it's been so long now, forget the details. But it's been a bit. And back then, I mean, just like his walling strategy, sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't, but... Our wall here is going over to the lumber camp, and he's done an okay job again. It hasn't been perfect. You look at how Blue's setting himself up here, and it looks like a standard fast castle build for Blue. Everything's looking pretty clean. Now, these guys are a little over 1,000 elo, so it's not what qualifies for low elo legends technically. And no offense to anyone that's at 1,000, but I think it's, it's close enough here where it would be acceptable for a Tuesday stream. Um... Certainly, the amount of idle time we're seeing here is pretty much on par with what someone at 900 would have. So, it's close. Now, Wall was a player, when I initially started getting the emails about it, 
Um, I was getting a lot of emails from players who would play uh, at a time zone that I'm not normally watching Age of Empires, which means when it's midnight or beyond for me. And I wasn't really sure why until I looked at his profile. So he's a player, the account was Australian, and uh, was playing naturally playing against a lot of people who were in time zones where they would be awake at that time, right? So um, it was it was more difficult for me to be able to track this guy down and watch his recorded games. And eight months ago, or actually I think it was ten months ago now, with the first Legend of Wall, I could not download recorded games from player profiles. So it was almost impossible for me to get games. Uh, but actually, did I get games from the player profiles, Ben? Maybe they would recently made that change. Hola. But yeah, I started to get these emails from these people. Um, a lot of people in like Japan China. and China. And they were saying, hey, like this guy keeps doing this. You need to check it out. And I, no offense to the people who send me emails, but I can't look through all the emails. And normally when someone says it's the best game ever, I look at it and it's not the best game ever. <laughs> so I was a little bit suspicious, but man, did Wall freaking deliver, man. But what's the deal here? It's been a while since I've watched him and I didn't get spoilered with this one. I didn't want to look ahead and see what he would do. It almost looks like a standard-ish build. What's the plan? I think he went fast feudal before. Okay, he's going to stone. Throw some CS on it. Says, I played him last week on Arabia. He immediately came forward with his scout and three villagers. Tried to steal my sheep and wall in my berries. No barracks, but I watched another game of his and he did the exact same thing. What? That sounds amazing. We have to watch more. Actually... That's, it's still fitting his personality, though. He's still walling up, right? It sounds horrible to play against. All right, looks like I know what we're doing today, and YouTube's going to have a lot of cool content in the future. Cool, cool. Now, I personally love the fact that Blue has milled the deer here. For this elo, I think players should do it more frequently. You could push them in, but I think that with the amount of focus it takes for this elo to do everything else, making a mill on the deer is completely fine. Now, the lumber I camp's bothering me because these villagers are walking around here. I'm not sure why his villagers are doing that and why he hasn't fixed it. He probably hasn't noticed. But okay. Wall is sending villagers forward, guys. You know how, like, there are legends, but normally they try and lie about it? Or they try and hide the fact that they do a certain thing because they don't put it in their name? Like, the legend of you got douched, for example. It's you got douched, but backwards. The legend of the liar, he lies about what he's going to do. Wall puts it in the name. He says, you know what's coming. Only, I don't think people would ever expect that anyone would ever do anything this ballsy. Here we've got two villagers. Now, this is a lot of walling you'd have to do, right? I suppose you could wall this way. But if you want to wall around the enemy walls, this is a really tough arena generation for this. Okay, this is Blue's point of view. Blue is a seized Vils now. Now, what's his reaction here? This is a map where you normally just go fast castle. And it's a map where a lot of people practice their build orders and they're not used to aggression. Ooh, wall's going to kill the eagle. And actually, whoa, Wall's going to wall in front of the gate first. So the scout being in feudal age now will always kill that eagle anyways. So this eagle can't, you might as well just fight with it and do some damage. Yep. Yeah, this is very similar to what that guy had said on Reddit. Now, also, I saw Wall was playing with different civs on Arena. So I'd like to investigate some of them. As long as viewers are down. And so now there's Wall on Blue's Wall. <laughs> And Blue, uh, I guess, forgot to go to gold at the proper time because has the food to go Castle Age. We'll have a market and a blacksmith. Truthfully, Blue really needs to brush up on his fast castle build order because if he was on the way to Castle Age soon, I think things would be fine, but things will be delayed a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six villagers. Six of the 28 walling. Also, I wonder, did Wall scout this? Ooh. What if Wall doesn't realize he needs to walk around? That'd be kind of funny. 
All right, Blue, doing something that I was going to mention. Going to stone. I think that you could just drop a castle here later on. And for now, you should realize <laughs> that Wall's invested a lot of resources into walling you in. Obviously, you'll want to leave your base eventually, but this should be completely fine. Now, the way Wall walled last time I saw this was, yeah, he made the boxes. So he would make these boxes so he could put siege inside of it. So lines and lines of walls. And then he would put, like, Maganels here if the enemy would make rams. And then Bombard Cannons if he makes it to Imp. He has zero on food right now. His macro is not good. <laughs> this is... His economy is, is, is pretty bad. Um, no other way to say it. I don't see how he'll ever make it to Castle Age. The thing is, this strategy, it should not work. Okay, we're going to have walls over here as well. It looks like wall has scouted. Okay, I, I don't know how I'm able to feel this. Um, but I am beginning to feel anxiety on Blue's behalf right now. Is anyone else in the same boat? Like, granted, you know that it is beatable. But when this starts to happen, you're just like, oh boy, what if I don't find a way to get through here? It's your anxiety? Oh, definitely is. That's just a big part of my life. <laughs> that's a that's not a bug. It's a feature of being T90. So doubling up on walls 16 minutes into the game, and now we finally have some farming eco for wall. Economically, things are pretty close. If you're wondering why Red has more villagers, it's because his TC has not been idle on the way to Castle Age yet, and Blue did. Uh, interesting farms for Blue. There's nothing too wrong about that, and I think that what he could do is just drop a castle on one of these areas, and then eventually shoot the walls down. Can we do the math on this? What is it? Five stone for a stone wall? Oh, yeah, that doesn't... Hold on. Uh, roughly... 137 tiles of Stonewall. And and more to come. Now, if you're blue, at a higher level, you just add a TC and get an eco lead. You eventually drop the castle. I don't think... Yeah, this is, this is honestly perfect. The way blue is playing this is really good. Just gain the villager lead and then drop a castle here soon. You do have to have some sense of urgency, but the enemy is not even in castle age yet. So there shouldn't be any real way that he can threaten you. If Red gets all the relics and this game goes very late, then it could be a problem, but you should be able to break through. More walls from wall! Still six villagers. That's six villagers that haven't been bringing it. Wait, what? Is he getting forging? What? Hello? Why? <laughs> Forging gives you attack on uh, melee units, and the only melee unit he has is his scout. <laughs> Just in case? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> okay, whatever. He, he doesn't need to be in cast late anytime soon. Who needs to use the food for that? Uh, making outposts just to see what the enemy's up to. He actually sees the ranges there. And I suppose blue could have been a bit faster to make an archer or two. But here goes Blue. He's dropping off the stone. Remember, Blue lost his eagle, so he doesn't really know what's up. And I think you could be more aggressive with that castle. I think you can place it right up against your walls. In fact, the big play would be delete your walls. Place it even closer to his. Hmm. Yeah, but the castle drop means that you can go through these walls. And at this point, you should have a pretty big eco lead. Plus the siege workshop. I think... For 1,000 ELO, Blue's way of addressing this is perfect. Get some Siege out, drop a castle, but also take an eco lead. Some people boom too much and they just stay on eco and they never try and break through. Some people send everything they have to try and break through. This is a really good mix. Hmm. Yeah, Looney Loser, I saw that he's playing Berbers on those maps. Kind of uh, saving that one for later. Okay, math whiz is in chat. 221 times 5. That's like... Uh, it's over a 1,000 stone invested into walls in Feudal Age. 
Okay. Castle is going to start doing its work here. You could also make a couple petards if you really felt the need, but I think a few rams would be good. And now I wonder how Wall addresses this. If the enemy gets out, they'll have stronger eco, and they can make plumed archers and archers and all those types of things. Wall is a minute away from casting. Now, what's unique about the way Wall walls is, is what he prioritizes, because a lot of people would not commit to it, and they would just say, well, I'm going to boom now. And I think if you do that, you're not really doing the walls justice. So you can actually research fortified wall early, and what is unique about his Portuguese play is Portuguese is probably one of the best civilizations to be one town center on. So he try. I assume he's going to do it. He's going to try a fast Imperial. And then when he's an imp, he's going to make Fatorias, which take up population space, but they do give you resources. And then he could get chemistry and make Bombard Cannons. All right, so we have a Ram. So 10 villager lead. With two TCs pumping, a ram's already about to break through the second layer, and Wall is just making more. And there's actually a third TC going up over here. It's actually amazing how strong this is. Because I, again, for a thousand elo, I'm really impressed with how Blue's addressed this. But I actually think he chose the wrong wall piece to attack. He should be attacking here. Oh, you know what? I bet you he can't delete his own walls because he can't click them. Look at that. How are you supposed to click your own walls to delete them? So he actually had to go through the gate. That's interesting. Yeah, he had to go through the gate. Okay, so now he has to go kind of diagonally. Now there's more walls out here. All right. Fletching would help. Bodkin would help as well. Elite Skirm. Hello? <laughs> Fortified wall. <laughs> that sub would be proud. I don't know what Elite Skirmisher is really going to do for you here. As you see, uh, wall has made... It's not. It actually hasn't made what I was expecting. I was expecting... Where's the university? Where is it? He, he has it. Am I blind? Oh, it's right there. Okay. And then he has the Siege Workshop. So... Yeah, he actually has his buildings to go Imperial Age. Hmm. Wall continues to wall. Wall's going to click up to Imp, pretty much what we saw from him 10 months ago. He's going to get Town Watch first, so I guess he has some vision on what the enemy's up to. Now, Shots look at Blue. <laughs> Blue just now finds out the hard way there's more walls back here. Because you can see around the Maganel when it attacks you. And he's like, what is this crap? Okay, what's your fallback strategy here, though, chat? Onager cut, right? So, Blue, at this point, he has a 20 villager lead. Great economy. Your fallback is to go for Onager and cut through the trees. So, just keep that in mind. Red has an outpost here. He can see there's a TC. He has an outpost here. He can see there's, there's nothing coming yet. But in order to go Imp... You do need to, uh, or sorry, in order to get on a tree, you need to go imp. I think maybe this is where Blue starts to panic and make some mistakes a little bit. Because now he gets Bodkin Arrow, and that's actually a lot of food. Maybe it's best to just rush Imperial Age. Dirty Villager lead, though. Here comes the Maganel, walk through, and... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, my goodness. I would be so frustrated if I'm Blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. He knew there was one back there. He made his own. Now he's got to make another one. All right. Wall. Wall could see that the whole way in because of the outpost. So he kind of knew. And it's not like he has a real economy to focus on. And when you make Fatoria, which is 250 stone and 250 gold, you need population space. It takes up 20 pop space. So he's practiced this strat, man. He's going to prep the hells this year. And he actually has pulled villagers off of food, it looks like. Because he has seven on food with 15 farms. So I guess he realizes Vitoria give him enough food. He, he really does not need that. Okay, Blue is going to eventually take these ranges. And Blue is going to go, I guess, for archers. And Wall is extending the walls. And he's making a siege workshop on this side. 
into Siege Workshop on this side is here already. Now, he does not have a castle yet. Um, and there's Fatoria number one. And they do bring in resources, but it costs stone and costs gold to make. Like, but with chemistry, you can make Bombard Cannons. The enemy won't be an imp until, well, two minutes from now. And Bombard Cannons could be out already. 88 villagers for, for blue. Insane eco is he's actually going to go skirms. Again, I'm not understanding the skirm decision, but it, the build order here is so impressive. And I think uh, blue, uh, oh, wow. sorry, soul in chat is saying that red should just boom. He doesn't really have the eco to boom when you go Fatoria. I think that's the whole point is you combine the wall strategy with the bomber cannon strength and making Fatorias. He is one on food. So he tries to start adding villagers out of multiple TCs. That's going to disappear really quick. And your TCs will just be idle. So he's... The thing is, he I don't think he's interested in spending food. So this is how it works with petards, because I know some people are going to think about that. So uh, in order to get through a feudal age piece of wall, stone wall that is, you need one petard. Castle age wall, two petards. Fortified wall, three petards. So in this case, you would need a dozen petards. Actually, more than that to be able to break through. And that's if your petards don't get killed. Plus, petards are 60 food and 20 gold, I think. And they also take a long time to create. The petards definitely will not be the play here. Maybe with some rams earlier. All right, there's the first bombard cannon. This must be the guy who posted on Reddit. This is exactly what... This is pretty much exactly what he was saying. Then again, wall does exactly the same thing. Blue's not walling. He's just running out of space for houses, man. He has all this population, but no space. He's trying to place them back here, too. Trebuchet would work for a time, I guess, if you're blue. But the thing is, this puts you under pressure a lot faster than you would expect when someone walls like this. You would not expect bombard cannons on your castles. 34 minutes when someone has, has walled the entire map, the entire game. Uh, maybe it was somebody else that's true who's in Dark Age. Yeah. Look, wall realizes the only way the enemy wins is to cut through the trees. Look at his outposts. He can see the trees on both sides. He can almost see the edge of the map. Now, something I saw from him before was he actually onager cuts the wood lines and extends his walls to the edge of the map. I don't know if he'll do that here. I would love for him to do that here, but he would need Onager first, and with zero on food and only relying on... Okay, two and soon three Fatorias. It will take a bit to get the resources for that. Castle goes down for blue. Okay, now blue's trying Onager. He's like, oh god, what on earth is this? Let's try Onager. So the Onager's now in. Okay, I hope he doesn't try and use skirms against the walls all game. <laughs> well, I mean, skirmishers are more effective than than eagles would be. Because they just get hit. Obsidian arrows does not exist anymore. It was removed from Mayans. And uh, they now have the... Uh, shoot, I don't even remember how to say it. But whatever that tech is, it actually gives your skirmishers extra bolts. We see a castle from wall behind all this. But the unique text very strong for the skirmishers as we see wall walling the wood lines even. I just love the commitment, guys. Like I, I understand that this this might only be possible at certain elos, but statistically speaking, wall is above average at like 1050 or 1100 elo. Um, there are more people under walls rate than above it. And the level of commitment to the strat is just sick. Here we're going to have <laughs> another Fatoria That takes up 80 population space from him. But resources are coming in. You don't need the villager count. Hello. He actually, he's got a decent villager count with it too, which is respectable. Okay, blue should have an onager, right? Did he not... Is he not cutting somewhere? I think Blue is, is doing too much almost. You know, it's like he's so stressed at the moment. 
He's forgetting the basics of this position. I think the basic would be make an onager. Unless I'm missing it. Is he cutting somewhere? Oh, he is cutting. Okay. Now, Wall can actually see this. <laughs> Someone in chat says, I would just resign. <laughs> uh, remember the Reddit thread, though? It said, I feel so insulted. Or what was it? I forget the word he used. What I loved about that Reddit post was that the guy had massive respect for how he'd be invested. Violated. Yeah, he felt so violated. He had so much respect for the strategy despite being violated, which is really cool. It's like when I have lost to Huang, I feel the same way. Like, how did I lose to that? And then it just continues to happen and happen and happen. Okay, now this is the crucial part of Wall's strategy. He himself is going for Onager. And this is where I think we might see him cut through the trees. So he can snipe the enemy Onagers from anywhere. And the enemy can never leave. Wall is just having fun. Yeah, he is having fun. I, I, if I could flex on someone like this at my elo, I'd be having a lot of fun too. Bombard cannons here, just camping. I, also, it's worth pointing out there's golds and stones that Blue hasn't been able to get because of these walls. That hurts too, and okay. Wall now getting siege engineers. He does not fully see this yet, but if he was looking over here, he could notice it. Seems pretty focused on cutting to this side right now. So I don't know if he's actually spotted it. He's bringing an Onager over. He's bringing Bomber Cannons over. Now, if Blue were to get through with Elite Eagles and Skirmishers and Villagers, you know, I think everything could be fine for him. In fact, let's look at the total resources collected. Blue is ahead with everything except for Stone and Gold right now, which I guess is expected. This is all Blue can see. Let's just look at it from Blue's perspective for a bit. Cutting through. He probably can't believe it, but he sees the score. He sees he has a good lead. Should probably start selling some of the food. Selling some of the wood. Okay, he sees what looks to be a cut from the enemy. Hmm. <laughs> okay, that's actually good. Because he could maybe break through. He's like, we got this. Okay, here he goes. He's cut through. Big moment here for Blue. He could actually escape. Here he goes. He's running through. He sees villagers. Oh, it's a desperate quick wall attempt. And the quick wall actually happens. But now the eagles are here. And oh no, there's more walls. What? Wall? You weren't supposed to have prepared for this. And now the bombard cannons are here. And the bombard cannons should be able to take care of that pesky onager if it gets close enough. And now blue is... <laughs> this is where he felt violated, I guess. Now, Archibus on the way, which will give the Bomber Cannons Ballistics. Now, look over here. He's extending the walls. So, he makes gates so the enemy can never run back through the hole that he makes. And he's extending the walls so he can range the enemy from a greater distance. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. Not another one. Okay, well, he just took out his own gate, which is kind of funny. All right, uh, well, the gate will go up. The Bombard Cannons have to roll back. Blue's like, we got it. We got it. Will we get it? Oh, no. Oh, the quick walls. That was a good. I mean, it's two pieces of wall. It's not that impressive, but still, it's pretty clutch as the Eagles will eventually die. Blue is getting capped Ram, so he's tried. He tried Ram. He tried Onager. He's now going to go for Siege Ram, I guess. And Blue's even trying to chop the tree with villagers now. He's desperate. Anything that will work at this point. And meanwhile, so much of his eco is being ranged by the Bombard Cannons. He's now going to send skirms this way. And, and here you have Bombard Cannons and Onagers as well. This is... This guy is such a legend! This guy is such a legend. This is so epic. Certainly one of the more unique strategies I've ever uploaded to my channel and the fact is is it's working against players who boom up to 100 villagers against players who, who tend to know the counters probably had to put hundreds of hours into the game and it's just so it, it's an absolute masterpiece some people they sit down in the evening and they game other people 
a masterpiece. And that's what Wall does. Another gate here. So another little area for his Bombard Cannons as he's slowly closing in like a boa constrictor here on the enemy. I just love how when you have Fatoria Eco, you don't really even need to focus on anything at home. So you just go to this side, you cut with Yonager, you extend your wall. Go to this side, you walk forward, extend your wall. I'd love to see Fatslob play this guy. Wall, imagine wall trying to wall in Fatslob and Fatslob saying, that's great. <laughs> the game would never end. Both players would sit back the game would genuinely never end, and here comes Blue. He's going to try and push through this side. He figures that Wall can't be in every single spot. And unfortunately, he's mistaken. But 2,000 gold. 2,000 gold, 105 villagers, 60 army. Blue has way more on the map. He just can't do anything with it. There's 23 Bombard Cannons, 3 Onagers... Two monks and a scout for red. That's all he needs. Here he's going to run forward and probably extend his walls even further. Something that blue can't really see right now. Blue is so focused on trying to break out here. Didn't work here. He should go with about like 20 rams. Wait till you have 20 rams. Wait till you're 200 pop and go for it. I'm actually really curious if he can break out. Because I feel like with enough siege rams, you should be able to break out. Now, if Wall had more Bombard Cannons here, not so sure about that. I think 10, 15 Bombard Cannons would be enough to take out the Rams. Okay, another Gates here. <laughs> so, I mean, at this point, Blue could barely chop wood on Arena. This is how you make it so Arena games don't last six hours. Just play like this. Okay, so he's going towards the middle. Again, he sees stuffs here. He sees stuffs here. He doesn't have a castle, by the way, to the people saying Trebs. Here he goes. The thing about these Portuguese Bombard Cannons, though, is that they don't miss. And it looks like the Rams... Is that bad pathing? Did he try and click them through here? I think he did. Oh, the pathing's not helping here. That's true. He could make a castle. I, I just... The thing about Trebs is... It doesn't solve the main problem that you're gonna have to get to these walls here. It would take forever... And there is a sense of urgency needed because you'll run out of resources against Portuguese. I just don't think Trebs are a realistic option here. Not not at this stage, anyways. Maybe earlier. Here, the Onagers have come in and blue. Oh, no. Oh, no. And he just resigns. He says, GG, GG, 11. And Wall says, GG. And blue. I mean, respect to him for saying GG and all that maintaining that that etiquette he's not resigning yet and no the game ends look at that the thing is he's back but it's better than ever 515 530 stone wall pieces on the map and that's not even counting the um uh the five gates so much stone invested into walling the build order seemed to be brushed up upon in some ways anyways um, and, and blue, I, I feel a bit bad for him because it's so easy to backseat game and say, oh, blue should have done this. Blue should have done that. But he's, it's, it's 1100 ELO or just below that right now. Um, I think I, I kind of broke down that I think blue needed to prioritize imp a little bit. Basically, you, you have to take the eco lead that red gives you when he does this. And then you have to go for onager a bit faster, trebs a bit faster, rams a bit faster. But once the enemy makes it up to him faster than you, you're in trouble. Because if those Bombard Cannons come out and Wall commits like this, that's the only result you're going to see. And look at the timeline. This tells you how far ahead Blue was. And this happened in the first Legend of the Wall episode too. You get ahead, but it's hard to break through those walls if someone commits to it to that degree. Economically, it was the Golden Stone that ended up winning Wall the game. The stone, of course, he used a lot of... Um, Food and wood, I mean, I guess with another sieve, maybe you like the food and wood a bit more. Still was a position where I think Blue could have sold some of that for gold at the market. You look at the scouting, wall it scouted an awful lot. It's very hard to get to 82% scouting on Arena because of the wood lines. But when you chop through the wood lines, <laughs> uh, you're going to see a lot more. 
So, impressive. Uh, I'll end the video with William in Twitch chat says, this guy is my ELO. Now I'm scared. All right. Also, a small part of me wants to 1v1 the 12, 1300 players right now who are like, oh, they're so bad. They would never lose to this. I I kind of... <laughs> I kind of want to show them that they would lose to this. <laughs> but I won't do it. I won't do it. That's mean. That's petty. Ledge in the wall makes it look easy. Let's put it that way. So, um, here's the deal. He normally does this with Portuguese. Now, if you guys are interested, he has another one with Burgundians. And I am like, I'm a little bit perplexed on how he would play this with Burgundians. Do you want to see the Burgundians game? It was another arena one. I, it's beyond me what he would do with Burgundians. It's not really a civilization that I would, I would see being the best for this. Okay, let's try that. Um, and apparently we need to look at his Arabia stuff too. Now, I don't know if we'll do Arabia today. I might just leave it at one more wall game and, and save some content for later. But I do have the other one.